Hello folks, Kevin Grable here from Stansfield Creek Outdoors. We're going to start a new series here, here called Just the Facts, Ma'am, Just the Facts. There is so much disinformation out there about various gun laws that's going on nowadays that, you know, who knows what's going on. So we're going to bring you information that's coming out of the White House, coming out of the state of Minnesota, that's where we're based, and the surrounding area, and just in general things that may be affecting you and how it affects you. One of the things that is frustrating is gun laws go on the books, not all the time, but on a somewhat regular basis, first of the year, halfway through the year. Oftentimes those gun laws, you hear about it in the news, and the next thing you know it's supposed to be taking effect, and you think it is, but it's not necessarily taking effect because some laws are tied up in the courts. There's a couple in Minnesota that are still tied up in the courts, and we'll, we'll bring those to you in, in future videos. Main topic today is um, the new executive action coming out of the White House, uh, the red flag laws in Minnesota, and also a study out of uh, Ohio about constitutional carry. Does the crime rate just go through the roof like all the anti-gun folks thinks happen? So we'll be bringing you that information. And as always, we'll have links down below that point you to this, these studies and these graphs so you can see for yourself. You, can, you don't have to rely on me or us for that information. You can go right to the source. We will always post the source of our information so you can go research it yourself. Um, so without any, oh, hey, hit the like button and, and please subscribe. Then we can bring you this information more uh, on a timely basis, hopefully. Um, you know, these videos take a lot of work. So we'd like to hear from you and know that you're following and liking us and listening to what we have to say. So. Without uh, further ado, the first one we're going to talk about is the gun storage executive action coming out of the White House. This is not an order. This is an action. You are not, um, it, it, everybody argues whether or not an order is law or not, but they in fact can be um, enforced, right? So we found that out in Minnesota during the pandemic. I mean, as much as you wanted to say what was going on wasn't the law, and I didn't have to listen to it, boy, you know, the Attorney General here is going after people. Still, it's 2023 now. Anyway, uh, the Gun Storage Storage Executive Action uh, is coming out of the White House. It's going to be headed up by Jill Biden. And uh, what they're going to do is they're going to provide information to schools, uh, mainly to the administrators, principals, and they can disseminate this information down to the students. <clears throat> the... They're coming from, they're, they're going to the kids, right? They're going to the kids. They're going to get to you by going to your kids that are in school. Um, the big push behind this is their belief in the data that says a, um, the number one cause of death in school-aged children is by a firearm. Now, if you want the data to say something, to support your discussion, you can do that. And that is exactly what they're doing here. When you look at the data from five years old to 17 years old, as a group, yes, the number one cause of death is firearms. Remove age 16 and 17 from that group and it's minuscule. I mean, it's, 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 it's not hard to even register on the chart. But when you add in the 16 and 17 year old kids, into that demographic, which they are school-aged kids, but they have other things going on. The, the suicide rate, unfortunately, is very high in that age bracket. Also, so is, um, is gang activity. So when you take some of these areas like Chicago that are having you know dozens of murders a month, a day, a weekend, those, those are the kids that are dying. They're, they're involved in some kind of drug or gang activity. So that's that's pushing that that's pushing the the um, graph to say that the number one cause of death is is firearms. You you pull that you pull them out and it's nothing. So th again, you know people can take the data and twist it any way they want. But when you look at the data, when you look at the data by age by age group, you sub you take out those two groups, those two age groups, sixteen and seventeen, and it just drops off. It's nothing. That's that's not the number one cause of death. You know, it's drowning, uh, car accidents. You know, your car is more likely to kill your, kill your grade school kid than, than, uh, than a firearm. <clears throat> um, so, you know, 
pay attention to the data, read the data. Anyway, if you have a school-aged kid, you're going to be getting something from, uh, from the Biden administration through your school. So, of course, your kids, your kids are going to try and guilt you, especially as they get older. Um, the one thing I do want to point out, though, that, you know, you should properly store your firearms, right? I mean, if you have kids in your house, you should not, um, you, they should not have access to those guns. You know, they should be, they should already have gone, they gone through gun training and everything else. In the state of Minnesota, I, this isn't true for every state, but in the state of Minnesota, you are required to, by law to um, store your firearm such that a, a child cannot get it. I'll post that law in, uh, in the uh, description down below as well. So you're already obligated in the state of Minnesota to, to do that. Um, there's another statistic, statistic out there, that's hard to say, that 76% of the firearm incidents at school, not deaths, just incidents, you know, kids, you know, you hear about it in the news, kids bring, kids bring a gun to school to show their friends because they grabbed it out of dad's drawer or whatever, you know, but that's, what, that's where they're getting them. They are, they are getting those guns from home. So it, it doesn't involve death, but it involves a firearm incident at school. So, so yeah, lock them up, you know, I mean, make sure they can't get at them. When I grew up, uh, deputy sheriff lived across the street. We were over there playing, you know, as kids, you know, we were uh, grade school age. He would come home in his uniform, take his gun belt off, gun belt, and the gun went in the cabinet above the, above the refrigerator. Now that's not secure. It wasn't locked. It didn't need to be back then, but we didn't go there. That's, we couldn't reach it, number one, but we respected that. We didn't go there, but lock up your guns. So that's what's coming. That's number one. Number two is um, red flag laws in Minnesota. So as most of you probably are aware, that law went into effect. It was um, this year, went into effect January 1st. Today it's uh, January 30th already. Um, so it's not a lot of... I don't like red flag laws. There's a lot of reasons not to like red flag laws. Everybody's got an opinion, but that's my opinion. I don't like them. Um, they can be abused, and uh, it's not unheard of. It's unfortunate, but hopefully, hopefully um, people will be able to discern in the court system what's real and what's not. Anyway, outside of my opinion, how it's going to work here in Minnesota is... Um, uh, someone has to uh, petition the court to take your guns away. That someone has to be a spouse, ex-spouse, a person you're involved in a relationship with. So that could be a girlfriend, boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, ex you know, ex-boyfriend, whatever the case may be. But they have to be involved in a relationship with you in order to petition the court. So those are the people that can, can pet petition the court. <clears throat> Law enforcement can also petition the court they can they can for you know whatever reason they might have a reason why you shouldn't have a gun um, as well as the county attorney <clears throat> so those people can also take an action against you but they have to petition the court <clears throat> and get a court order to do that they just can't say hey we're taking your guns there's two forms of the order number one is an emergency order which would be an immediate would immediately go into place and it lasts for a duration of 14 days. So I'm, I would assume this is some kind of extreme situation, right? You know, there's something, whatever's going on, a very extreme situation, and the court feels that we need to take them now and figure it out, what's going on, <clears throat> right? And a, an immediate short-term order can roll into a long-term order, but a long-term order does require a hearing. There has to be a hearing um, before a judge to make a decision. And that order, that order could uh, span in duration from six to six months to a year. Um, so that's, that's the two types of, 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 of orders that can come against you. Um, the law states that you can turn, you don't have to turn your guns over, over to uh, law enforcement. The law states that you can turn your firearms over to an FFL, which is a, a federal firearms licensed dealer, or a family member. Um, it is not required to be turned over to uh, law enforcement. I would expect there's going to be some pushback uh, in, in the heat of the moment that if this happens to somebody that, you know, if you want to give it to your, you know, your son or your grandpa or whatever um, at the scene, um, I would imagine there's going to be some pushback, but you have that right. I will post the law again in the description down below. Read the law. Make sure you understand what it says, you know. So 
you know, you can argue all about your rights and everything, but it, you know, if you press them on it and they know this, you know, they they'll probably allow you to do it, right? There's some laws that are kind of fuzzy. This one's pretty cut and dry. So, but make sure you have somebody that you really trust if you are going to give it to a family member because, you know, you're more than likely you're going to get your gun back from the law enforcement agency eventually, hopefully, whatever the issue is, you get it resolved and you get them back. Um, I know I've heard horror stories about people getting firearms back from uh, law enforcement. I uh, did have a firearm that was stolen back in the 1980s and I did get it back. Um, it was a very simple process. It wasn't even a big deal. Um, uh, and that was in, uh, for those of you in Minnesota who are aware of Hennepin County, that was in Hennepin County. So it was, it was pretty simple. You know, what's the landscape today? It's a little bit different. I, I understand that, but, but you can get them back. Um, so anyway, you know, give them to your buddy. I can't give them to your buddy, but you give them to your brother and he decides he doesn't like what you're doing and goes off and sells them. There's nothing you can do about it. You know, sue your brother. So, so be careful who you, who you give them to. The third topic, and this is kind of this is a big deal. It's it, there's more research needs to be done, but this is a big deal. So many states are going to uh, permitless carry or a constitutional carry, depending upon the state you're in. It just they kind of determine how to they want to word that, um, and it's different. Just just FYI, if you are unsure about a certain state that you're going to be going to, whether you can carry your firearm there or not, go to the USCCA.com. And they have a map, and it'll tell you exactly what you can do with the permit you do have. And if you don't have a permit, what can you do? Um, you know, you're a non-resident in whatever state that has a constitutional carry. Can you? What, how old do you got to be? Is there a magazine restrictions? You know, whatever the case may be. USCCA has all that information. It's very detailed and very up-to-date. Um, so I recommend you go there before you travel at any time, really, with a firearm. That's a, it's a great, uh, great, great resource. They also talk about... Um, uh, uh, mace, can you use mace? What type of fire, knives can you have? You know, switchblade, no switchblade, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, so go check what you can do there. But the state of Ohio um, did a study because a lot of states that went to constitutional carry, you know, the gun, the anti gun crowd was saying, you know, wild, wild west, you know, the crime is going to be out of control when all these people can carry a gun anytime they want, anywhere they want. And um, you know, is it true? Well, the study that Ohio did is says, no, that's not true. That's not true at all. In fact, it's far from the truth. Again, I'll post that a full study down below, but the study will show you, shows you that uh, this was done by the Attorney General, uh, Ohio Attorney General, in conjunction with the Center for Justice Research at the Bowling, State, Bowling Green State University. So they performed this, uh, they, the research center and the university performed this uh, analysis. But they looked at the crime uh, rate um, in the various cities and with related to firearms. It's related to firearms, not in general, but related to firearms. Um, they looked at um, you know, reported crimes with the firearm. They also have in these cities that they did this study in, they have a system that actually hears gunshots. So they, 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 could, you know, they could log that as well. Violence with the firearm went down, and so did the gunshots on those systems. It's a it's a gradual trend down from before they instituted permitless carry till after. Granted, when you look at the graph in the study, it is a short-term graph. It is a short-term study because they've only had it for a couple of years. They've only had this in place for a couple of years. But it's on the downward trend. There's no wild, wild west. There's no... Uh, firearm guns you know all over the streets and people dying everywhere it's just that didn't didn't happen in fact and I'll, again I'll uh, put a link to this as well but the reported violent crime rate in the United States from 1990 to 2022 is on a downward trend it's except for the the summer of peaceful protests in 2020 which had a slight up up increase uptick it's been going down since 1990. There's no, the, you know, all these, all these arguments about it's just going to get out of control just, just aren't happening. So, so it's, it'll, it's an interesting study. I, 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 I ask that you look at it and draw your own conclusions, but um, it's just, it's just not, um, the, you know, the, the violent crime isn't with a firearm isn't off the charts. It didn't happen. 
Um, are people safer in these cities? Sure appears to be. Um, is it due to the constitutional care law? Mm, you know, it's hard to say at this point because the data is so new, but it's going to be in interesting to see, and I applaud the uh, state of Ohio for uh, moving forward with this study because now they can build on that and actually uh, draw some real, real, uh, real data. So that's what we have for you this week. Um, I hope to bring you some more. Again, please like and comment, and uh, uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. Just let us know uh, what you think of this video and what you think about the information we provide. And if again, reach out to us if you have a question. Thanks.